Dirty pigs and suits listening in know this. There are more of us than you think there are. Just you try and stop it all. <laughs> Because it's Manor. He's a kiss. Alright. <laughs> Wait, this is my pal Jono. What's in your braids, wee man? How you doing? You alright? Aye, fine. Cheers. Yes, yes, yes. Shut up. All you new listeners. Hey everyone! I'm so glad you're all enjoying my vlogs and I'm really appreciating all the love coming my way. So what I've done is I've got a little scrapbook and I've printed off all your lovely comments and stuck them in here and now I'm gonna to respond to them. I did say I respond to every single comment. So here we go. Petal 100. Easy one, Petal. The colour of nail varnish I've been wearing is triple hot pink. Donny but not darko. <laughs> yeah, I really do like guys with chubby fingers. <laughs> Tommy the legendary tiger. Cassandra, you're a freak. You'll never get a boyfriend. You're nothing more than a psychotic bunny boiler. Well, thank you for your candid comment, Tommy. Now feels like the right time to discuss the term bunny boiler. So the expression is from a film called Fatal Attraction. It's about this woman, played by Glenn Close, who gets seriously attached to Michael Douglas's character after a quick shag. Here's the science bit. Women release hormones when having sex. Men don't. So it's not surprising it ends up meaning more to us than them. Michael then dumps Glenn, so she seeks revenge by breaking into his house and boiling his pet rabbit to death. That's pretty dark, Tommy. I love animals. I've got two cats of my own. And I mean, for God's sake, I struggle to boil pasta. <laughs> What's this really about, Tommy? I think your little insult to me is actually a cry for help. I started to get these weird bits of fat at the top of my legs, at the back. It's horrible. It's like foreign bodies, like living under my arse. Is it really bothering you? Yeah, it looks all warped and deformed. Does Ryan mind? He hasn't mentioned it. Then why do you mind? It's not about him, it's about me. No. You want to look good for him. You dress up for him, you do this shit to your nails for him. You dress up too. Yeah, but not for a man. No, for lots of men. Uh huh. <laughs> so, less judgement on me. <clears throat> look, you're worrying about your weight because you want to have kids with Ryan and keep him around to help you raise them. Where does this even come from? Ryan doesn't want more kids, we're past that now. But are you? Those kids aren't yours. Well, I take care of them like they're mom. Don't you want something more? Something. Donna. It's, it's coming up for a year now. Donna, You're not allowed in here! Out! Do you want to try the shellac? Right, folks, listen up. I need to have a talk with you all about a wee issue I've become aware of in the office. Jack's told me he's been experiencing some harassment. He's detected a lack of tolerance to his personal views, and this has to stop, guys. But he's a Nazi. Oh, here we go. We can't just be calling people Nazis, Martin. But he's an actual Nazi. See, see that's... See what I have to put up with. Tolerance is very important to this company and I won't tolerate anybody who doesn't adhere to it. No, he blasts Hitler's speeches on his headphones so we can all hear it. I, I don't see what my personal music taste has got to do with anything, Martin. I, I don't complain to him about the disgusting animals that he listens to. That's what he calls rappers, cos he's a racist. I was, obviously I was being ironic, Martin. He hisses at my foreign boyfriend. Yeah. Emma, I've explained this. Has, I've hasn't like a wee snake. Just like, just like a wee snake. See, he's only doing a snake. That's just a joke. See, a joke. Jokes are free speech. No, saying that integration is for snakes isn't a joke. Sorry. Eh, uh, well, I, well, actually, I wasn't saying it, Martin. Was I? Was I, I was quoting it. It was a quote. That's not a quote. That's not a quote. What well, is a quote? Is it? It's a quote for my challenge: how to deal with problem races. Who wrote that? Obviously, I did, Emma. On office stationery. Taking stationery for personal use is an instantly dismissible offence, Jack. You've gone too far. You're fired. Ah, uh, you know what, fair enough. Sorry, guys. Aye, uh, fair enough. So, Tommy the Legendary Tiger, or should I say Tom Rogers, did a little research of my own since you weren't getting back to me. By Googling Tommy the Legendary Tiger, I've managed to find you on Borrow My Doggy and LinkedIn. I've also managed to find that you work for a hugely successful sandwich chain. <coughs> Subway. <coughs> 
So I phoned up head office just to find out exactly what branch. So I've just been down to Highgate, spoken to your manager Stevie. What a lovely boss to have, by the way. He told me the best time to catch you, Tommy, is between the hours of 11 to 3, Mondays to Thursdays. Did a quick recce of the building while I was there. Always got to know where the fire exits are, Tommy. Absolutely vital. <laughs> so what do you say, Tommy? Give you the chance to apologise in person. I'd really like to help settle this daft comment of yours. Maybe take you for a coffee. Great alfresco seating section in your branch. Be a great place to do it. Maybe we could be friends. Also, I love Jack Russells. You've got the cutest little Jack Russell ever. Maybe we could take me Harpo for a walk sometime. It really is a pet hate of mine, Tommy, for people to insult me that don't know their facts. Anyway, I'm really, really excited to hear from you, Tom. Also, I know you liked fresh bacon, so I've made some freshly baked scones and I've left them with your boss with a little note with my mobile number on it. And not just anyone gets that number, Tommy. Anyway, I'm really, really excited to hear from you, Tom.